Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Bob standing in for Kelly Gray right now until she's ready. She'll be here in a little bit. But I want to get started off. Anybody watching? Good morning, good morning. All right, we're going to start. Ready or not. Here we go. Good morning, Deb Bowden, or Bowden. How are you this morning? I'm filling in for Callie just for a little bit till she gets going here. I'll get started for her. There's six of you right now watching. Teresa Duggins, Andrea, Andrea Ridgeway Stone. Good morning. Good morning. So, let's start with some prayer while people are getting on. Lord, we thank you for another day you've given us to live and move and have our being in you. We thank you that you fearfully, wonderfully, thoughtfully, carefully, uniquely, purposely, and beautifully made us to be sons and daughters in your family forever. We were made by you. We were made for you. We belong to you. And it helps for you to say that. Just say, I, you know, I belong to you. I'm not my own. I'm yours. I was made for you. I was made from you. So I'll be, I'm a, God's given us a part of himself. He breathes the spirit of life into us. It's his spirit that lives in us. And then the Holy Spirit comes to live inside of us in a, in a bigger way. But we thank you, Lord, that we are your treasures. We are valuable to you. We, we thank you, Lord. Forgive us where we've not trusted in your goodness and in your love and in your care for us. Forgive us, Lord. Because of that, we disobey, and, and because of that, we rebel, and we don't believe, because our circumstances try to teach us differently. But forgive us, Lord, where we've not believed in that, trusted you in that. Forgive us where we've not um, surrendered our self-life, our self-will, our self-preservation, uh, our self-protection, you know, trying to do everything ourselves. Forgive us, Lord. You never meant for us to live that way. Help us to surrender that. And we just ask you, what is it you want to do today, Lord? What is it you want done? Direct us and we'll follow you. You're the king. You're the master. You're the savior. Forgive us, Holy Spirit, where we've not paid attention to you, where we've resisted you, quenched you in any kind of way. Uh, Caused you to grieve because of our attitudes of our, or our disobedience. Forgive us. Help us to work with you, Holy Spirit. We just open up every part of our being to you, Holy Spirit, to use anytime, anywhere. Speak to us, direct us, guide us. We want to be obedient children. We want to be loving children. And we give you praise and thank you, Father, for who you are. You are a good, good Father. You love your children. You have great plans in store for us. You have blessings. Thank you for the blessings we already have. Thank you for what you've already done. If you never do another thing, we're still blessed just because of who we're, uh, our family is, because of who we are, and because of what you've already done. Thank you for saving us. Thank you for forgiving us. Thank you for redemption's plan, the grace that brought it up to, down to man, as the song used to say. The grace of God, the plan of God, the love of God that brought this salvation plan to us and redeemed our souls, our minds, our history. We thank you, Jesus, for all those things. And why is it important that we um, trust in the goodness of God? Why is it important that we trust in the, the love of God? Because when you become tested, it's, you don't have time to get a thousand scriptures and memorize them all and say them all. It may be only one or two scriptures, but trusting that the Lord is working, uh, Romans eight twenty eight that God is working all things together for good. If you just have that one scripture and have the other, or maybe another couple of scriptures, you could make it. Uh, Romans eight twenty eight is uh, trusting that even the bad things, God is working something good out of it, that God has a plan. And that 
nothing took him by surprise. So that you can go through rough times when you, when you're going through a heavy trial and heavy warfare, you don't always have a clear uh, hearing from the Lord. So what you, it's you lean on what you already know. So if whatever you believed in your heart and you've put in there, uh, that's what you pull from to go through rough trials. And so you don't need 10 scriptures, like I said, sometimes just a few. So Romans 8.28 was one that I used when I was going through some rough times. That one and the, the Hebrews where he says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And then uh, Romans 8 as well, the rest of the verse where he says, nothing can separate us from his love, nothing. No uh, trials, tribulations, nothing present, or no powers, no angels or demons or future thing or past thing can separate us from God's love. Nothing keeps us separated. Even our sinfulness doesn't change his love for us. Now, our sinfulness can interfere with our relationship for sure. We, but we have to repent and get that clear. But even our doubts and fears doesn't change his love for us. So sometimes we go through uh, situations that are causing us doubt or fear and we haven't been perfected in our love yet so we interpret our circumstances in a fearful way and instead of and we panic but you know God doesn't discard us because we had a panic day or a, or a bad day or we begin to give in to the fear He's, nothing can separate us from his love so we're in we're walking and living in his love we need to, to live connected to his love, which means we always realize that we are dearly loved and that he loves everyone around us. And that we are, his love for us is beyond our comprehension. It's big, it's wide, it's deep. And uh, so why, that's important. So that's why every day I start out my prayer with, you know, forgive me where I didn't trust you in your love and trust who you are for me. It's not always what we know. It's it's not always what we know about how many scriptures in our head. It's what we've come to believe with what we know and trust about the character of God. The character of God is what brings us through when we don't understand the situation. We can't interpret it. We don't know what scripture may apply to it, but we trust God's character, and that's where we uh, our strength comes from. So we just uh, I like to start out today with repentance for where I've missed it the day before or even this morning if if we've had time to, to deal with people and things we may have already made some mistakes but the point is we start out with a clean slate we just repent of all the areas that we may have not trusted God in and disobeyed and then we trust him and we declare his goodness over us Amen. today we declare he is good and he never changes Amen. now our circumstances can change we have an enemy we have resistance in this world. This is not heaven yet, so there's a lot of things that should be happening that aren't happening or taking a long time to happen, but that doesn't mean they won't happen because God is working his will. So uh, that's why I like to start out with that. And we can go ahead and do our communion too while we're at it. Callie's already ready to get back on now, but we'll go ahead and do communion. So get your uh, communion uh, emblem yes, there. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And every day we remember the power of the covenant made through the body and the blood of Jesus. Why is it the body and the blood, not just the blood? Blood is the, is, is the main thing, yes. Blood is what makes covenants. But it was a blood from a body. And because he was representing us, he represented our bodies, not just his blood. So he was taking sickness from our bodies and putting it on himself. Not just our guilt, which the blood covers, not just our shame and grief, but also our anxiety and fear of the mind, our sicknesses in the body that aren't ours, they don't belong to us because Jesus took them away. So it's important that we remember the body and the blood. They're, they're twofold in the same. So Lord, we thank you for your body that was beaten, bloodied, hung on a tree, yes, Lord. and punished for us so that we might receive your forgiveness, your healing, your deliverance. We thank you for your body. 
We receive our healing today. We declare it's the children's bread and there's no sickness among us that can stay. We command it to go. It doesn't belong there in God's people. Amen. We thank you for the blood of the covenant, the most powerful blood, the most precious blood, the highest price covenant he paid for you because he loves you that much. You're that valuable that he paid the highest price for you. And we thank you for that blood that washes us and cleanses us and speaks a better word against all of our enemies and declares us whole and accepted and forgiven in the kingdom of God. Thank you for your blood. You are dearly loved and accepted, made right with God and able to commune with him. And he, he has a place for you sitting right next to him in heavenly places. He has a place for you in his heart. And it's all yours because of the blood of Jesus and what he did for you. He has a ministry of reconciliation, bringing yes. those who are separated and apart yes. back to him. That's what he wants. He wants a relationship. Amen. And he allows us to choose how deep and how far we're going to go in that relationship. Yes. So he wants it to be our free will. He wants a relationship based on love based on our desire for him as much as his desire for us. He could easily overwhelm us with his love, but he wants us to pursue him. He wants us to desire him. So, Lord, we just pursue you today. We desire you. We desire your presence. We desire your peace. We desire your person, who you are. It's not all about what you can do for us or even what we're called to do. That's great. When we fulfill what we're called to do, we get fulfillment out of that because it's yes. part of God's plan. But... Ultimately, it all begins and, and ends with how we develop a relationship with Jesus. Our trust in him, our depending, our time with him yes. is where all of our ministry will come out of. So we thank you, Lord Jesus. It's not about what we can gain from that. It's more about just knowing you more. We trust you, Jesus. We love you. We thank you for everything you've done. We can't love you and thank you enough. We just pray today for our families that Amen. they would all be come to know you. Every stronghold be broken over their hearts and minds today. The blood of Jesus covers them because we are asking, because we are in covenant with you. You will move and you will deal with them and you will draw them. You'll break the strongholds and darkness over their mind. You'll let light shine in. You'll bring people to witness to them. You'll speak to them in dreams. You'll do whatever it takes because we're in covenant with you and you love us. You love our children. You love our families. And we want that inheritance. We want that heritage to come down to our family. So, Lord, we pray for our families today that you will move in their hearts, yes. continue to draw them, continue to bring them to their destiny, to their yes. callings, their anointings, yes. their place in the kingdom. Let nothing stop it. Of every interference, every lie, every distraction yes. of the enemy, we break it now in Jesus' name through the power of the blood of Jesus. And we declare that they are all going to serve God with their whole heart and know you and become kingdom uh, impact people, kingdom-minded lovers of God. That's what we want. That would be, you know, we can, we can be, feel good about that if all of our children are our family. And some of you you're, don't have children or your children have already, you know, wandered way far from God or whatever. God, whenever we pray for our children, and it's not just our physical children, there's people God's put in your life they're like children to you that, that you have influence as a father or a mother and you speak into their lives and they need your confidence. They need your positive speaking into their lives as well as correction. God uses people that uh, we love sometimes to speak correction to us because we can trust it because they love us that they're our, our best interest is in their mind. Um, so we speak the truth in love. But the point is... Um, God's not limiting our area of influence, even in parenting, to just our natural-born children. Because in the kingdom of God, we're all family. We're all sons and daughters, brothers and sisters, mothers and fathers. In the kingdom, we're not limited to just my family name. We're, we're, we have a bigger family. And we can see that in our church, but we can also see it. If we look with eyes, we can see that open that there's a big family, bigger than even our little church or our little area of influence. It's the kingdom of God is so much bigger and the family of God is so much bigger. And so when we get to heaven, you're gonna be surprised. Some of you are gonna be surprised and say, well, 
And these were all my brothers and sisters all along. I had a bigger family than I realized. I was just focused on my little family. When that's okay, because God's put people in your area of influence, the ones that you are supposed to minister to the most are the ones that he's put right in your family. And so you need to, do need to focus on them. But remember, that's just not all your family. Amen. You've got a bigger family than that. Anyway, I'm, I'm going to give this back over to Callie. Let her speak to you, pray for you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Bob. Amen, amen, amen. Good morning. Good morning. It is Memorial Day. Memorial Day. And, uh, right? Yes. I got up this morning, and first of all, at 4 o'clock, when the Lord speaks to me so strong about something, I know it's not just for me, it's for you too. It's just, it's a knowing I have in my heart. So I want you to share this broadcast because I'm going to share just a short word God gave me this morning, and I believe it's for all of us. Um, he gave it for me and Pastor Bob and our family and Pastor Todd and Cindy and our church and our church families, but it's for you this morning as well. And then uh, as I was laying there this morning, I got to remembering all the memorials in my own life. Maybe I didn't remember all of them, but several of them stuck out in my mind. Several memorials where God moved in power in my life and in Pastor Cindy's life and in our family's life. And um, we are at a time, uh, Pastor Cindy and Pastor Todd preached on memorials today. And then I actually saw Pastor Karen post a picture of a memorial for her family that she has in her backyard. And I just so moved by that. But um, I want you today to remember the times. Let's make today a day of Thanksgiving. And let's remember the things that God has done for us. Let's remember the times he's moved. Let's remember he, the time he took tragedy tragedy, uh, whatever the enemy was trying to destroy us with, and he turned it around for our good. Let's remember the times that he saved us, healed us, delivered us, and set us free. So a couple of, of moments jumped out in my mind. Uh, we were at the park the other day with, a, with several churches that were praying, and um, we had been invited in, and I was looking around, and it's down, downtown on Texas Avenue, and I saw an old hotel that that was the first hotel Cindy and I ever stayed in when we came to Baytown, Texas. And when we came to Baytown, Texas, both of our parents were alcoholics. And I remembered that hotel. I remembered the pork and beans that we ate that day. And I remembered that in my spirit, even as a little girl, I knew that things were about to change for us. Now, how I knew that, only God, only God knows. God put that in my heart. I was a little girl. There was no way for me to know. But I had hope and I had faith. I remember uh, a little little street not too far from that hotel where we rented a house, and the and the, the Pentecostal lady came to evict me and my sister. I remember her coming, standing there talking to my mother, and later she told Cindy and I that the Lord told her, do not evict these people. My hand is on the girls. That's a memorial moment for me. That's a memorial moment. I remember... Um, God promising me that he was going to take care of me and my sister. I remember walking down a street, sharing a pair of shoes, and God promising me he was going to take care of us. He was going to watch over us. I remember um, being divorced for the, you know, and, and, and not knowing what I was going to do for a living and having ten thousand dollars to my name and i walked into church service and the lord said give nine and keep one and i remember god moving miraculously in my life so many times i remember um rachel someone calling me uh, actually she was out at the church is now hillside but she was out on a camp and they called me and my baby had type uh, one diabetes and she was messed up and she was having convulsions and seizures and I remember God touching her and moving and healing her and setting her free. I, I remember when we got the building for the church and we rented the building and we didn't have enough, we were, our church was small, our congregation was small so we didn't have enough financial backing to be able to get a loan and God supernaturally gave us the building. He gave us the building. He gave it to us. I could go on and on and on. I remember God saving my children. I remember God saving Wes 
and Amanda. I remember, I could go on and on about memorials that I have in my life, memorials where God moved, God moved. And here's the word of the Lord to you. God is moving in your life. And the glory of the Lord, I have been reading scriptures about glory. You know, when the glory of the Lord descends on us, what happens when it descends on us? Open heaven, God begins to move, he begins to bless. You can literally see the glow of the Lord on you. You can see the, and I, I really feel that. I feel like that, that there is a light shining on me. And this morning when I woke up early, I heard the Lord say, I am blessing, blessing, blessing you and Bobby. And he always calls him Bobby to me because I think that's his, that's his legal name. He doesn't call him Bob. He calls him Bobby. I am blessing, blessing, blessing you and Bobby and all your children and everything connected to you. And it startled me up out of my sleep because I knew it was the Lord. Because anytime he says anything three times, it's like, it's exclamation. It means it's done. Pay attention. I am blessing, blessing, blessing you and Bobby and all your children and everything that's connected to you. What a promise. You're connected to me. You're here every morning. You're connected to me and you're connected to God most of all. And he's saying, I, I don't care what's going on in your life. It may look like that everything's turned the wrong direction. It may look like this thing has gone south fast. Well, I'm telling you right now, he is blessing, blessing, blessing everything connected to you. And he wants you to begin to declare it and decree it over your life. So I, you need to write down the areas. Remember Pastor Kelly, told, last week we, we, poured the, we poured the wine or, or the grape juice over our children. It typified the blood. We poured it over our businesses. Now I want you to write down everything you're believing God for the blessing, 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 and begin to pour Take communion over it, pour the, pour the juice over it, and just declare that it is done. I, I'll pick up my Letters from God book, and I thought this couldn't be more perfect for the word that God gave me this morning, and it's called glowing, glowing. Because when the glory comes, you glow, glory, uh, glowing. And he used Romans 12 and 11, never lag in zeal and in earnest endeavor. Be, be a glow and burning with the Spirit, serving the Lord. This is in the Amplified Version. Now, here's the prophetic word for you today. And I want you to, to, to believe this and to hold on to this because this is. My spirit is like a light bulb inside your heart and soul. It dispels all darkness within you. No darkness is allowed in. When it is on, everybody can see it. I will make you glow and burn with body with holy zeal. Light will emanate from your spirit. Illumination will come easily to you in the morning. Powerful, overpowering passion to see my will accomplished will flood your life. All slothful spirits will be destroyed from all members of your family. That's the promise of the Lord. Spiritual apathy will never touch your doorstep. Love will be your banner, the signpost on every action and family and family deed. Spend your life glowing with radiant inner light. My light is the door to my glory, and glory is where I live. Standing in the light, and there will be no stumbling. Stand in the light, and there will be no stumbling in your life. Your success will follow you all the days of your life. That's a promise from God. Serve me in the light. Destroy my enemies with light. Light the paths of the blind. Open the sealed eyes, eyelids of the rebels, and show the world the path to me. And it, and it is his light. God, we just declare that your glory is descending on us in, in, in manifold proportions. That your light is just flowing and shining on our lives. And we're not afraid for your light to shine in every area of our heart, in every area of our being, because if there's anything in there that's not right, we want you to pluck it out. 
We thank, we trust you to do surgery on our hearts. We trust you to make uh, love our banner. We trust you to work in us your perfect will, purpose, and plan. We trust you. We don't trust another. We, tr we don't trust horses or chariots. We don't trust the things of the world. We don't trust mammon, but we trust you. And God, I just thank you that your glory is falling on your handmaids this morning on Memorial Day. And it will be a day we will not forget because we will remember the glory of the Lord being prophesied over us and the glory of the Lord being our mantle and the glory of the Lord being our, our, our rear post, our side, our side, our side guard, our, our front, our front guards. Lord, you have sent your glory to encamp around us and we are walking in that light and that light is our, uh, it, it, that light dispels all darkness and love is our banner. Love is our banner. So today as we go into this memorial day, let love be our banner. Let your light shine around us. Let us do good to everyone around us today. Let us show love to all of our brothers, our sisters, our family members, people that we're working with, whatever the case may be. Let love shine through and let your banner of love be, be, the, be the anthem of my life. Forgive us of all sin. Wash us and cleanse us and purge us. In Jesus' name. I love you so much. Have a wonderful Memorial Day, and we will see you tomorrow. God bless.